Well, it's been a minute, hasn't it, kids? But here we are. Yeah, yeah, here we are. Monday night, Toronto. It's really warming up out there. I mean, it's a little chilly at the moment, but uh, it's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I hope you've had a good two weeks, had a good long weekend. I'm on an extended long weekend. I bet you can guess what happened. Top secret. It's not my fault. But here we are, Monday night. Hey, Craft Beer Cons. Good to see you. Well, it is 9-11, a little bit later. You know why? If you've done a season change with me before. No, that didn't work. Sorry, just messing with the YouTube camera. If you've done a season change with me before, what happens is I sit down and then I realize that there's some admin I have to do. I have to, I have to create a new folder. And that takes a second. Actually, that's it. That's all I had to do. Uh, no excuse. We were watching a film movie night with the crew. I had a deliciously warm nugget of a dog cuddled up on my chest. She was very cuddly. I have a very cuddly dog. A very, very cuddly dog. Uh, not here tonight. I mean, she's in the house, but she's not joining me. She's, I think, asleep on the couch because she got all tuckered out on a long walk. Oh, there's Ben Johnson, the man with the baby. Um, anyway, welcome back. I myself, well, I had a good two weeks off, had a bit of a bit of a weird one. We got the dog, obviously, and that was wonderful. But then our beloved turtle passed away very unexpectedly last week, very young. She's only five. She could have lived to be 80. Um, we have no idea what happened. It was incredibly sudden. And uh, so it was very upsetting. It was a tough week last week. Um, still kind of digging out from it, if I'm honest with you. We haven't, we haven't done anything with her terrarium yet. And every time I walk by, I look at it looking for her and she ain't there. Oh, Ben Johnson uh, is pooing right now. So that's a nice little distraction for me talking about losing a beloved family pet. Uh, thanks, Ben. Thanks for that update. Do you have a beer on the toilet? Because uh, for a lot of dudes, that's their quiet place. They uh, they grab a beer and, you know, some reading material. And whether or not they actually have any business to attend to in the bathroom, you can close the door. So that's where we're at. Well, you know, it's good to know nothing's changed around here. Uh, hey, so uh, you know what I'm doing? I can't even remember if I've, I'm sure I've drank this on the podcast before. This is Ochame, I think is how you say it. Okame, I think it's Ochame. Uh, from Godspeed, of course, because you know what? I did 30 apps last season, and uh, I just want to get off on a good foot, and there's no better foot to get off on. Oh, let's adjust that. Let's say there's no better foot to start off on uh, than uh, than a Godspeed beer. Hey, if you're into foot stuff, that's cool. I'm not. Uh, let's see. Ben's answered. Uh, nope, no beer. But it is the only quiet place he has right now. There you go. A lot of dudes. A lot of dudes have that. Some dudes, you know, they'll do a bathroom reno in the basement just to even further separate themselves from the rest of the house. Um I tend to go outside, not go to the bathroom outside, guys. I'm not a savage. Um, I, that's a very inappropriate thing to say. I'm sorry. Um, that goes back to bad colonialisms. Um, I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not an uncouth person. Let's go with that. That's more what that. Uh, what I was trying to say with that. Sometimes words like that still just crop up. You know, things that you haven't thought about in ten or fifteen years, and then you use it, and you go, "Wait a minute, that's not an okay thing to say." Um, we have a different understanding now. Glad I caught myself, and uh, I am sorry for that. So, oh, and here's Kevin. How's it going, man? Um, what are we doing? We're drinking an Ochame, and I'm being racist, and I'm sorry for that. Um, still a work in progress. There's my Foley. Oh, yeah. So what's the deal with this beer? Hey, have you ever had it before? A lot of people have. It's a popular beer. <laughs> Ben's liking the content on this app already. Uh, oh, not doing the best pour. Oh, right into a perfectly positioned branded Great Lakes glass. Well, you want to know the good news? Godspeed and Great Lakes, they're buddies. Bim and Lackey, they hang out. I promise you that. Um, it happened to be, I needed a, a glass that was uh, an appropriate size for the short can. I didn't want a full pint glass. Uh, so you can see, this is this is a Hazy Boy. It's not Hazy Boy the way that like um, some of the New Englands are, but it ain't clear. You're not reading through that anytime soon. And part of the reason, I believe, for its haziness is its contents, which is Ochame, if you're not familiar, is an IPA. I love an IPA. And uh, it's got green tea in it. Now, I'm not sure... 
I've never asked Bim now that I think about it. I don't know if it's got um, matcha powder in it, which is like very finely ground up green tea, which dissolves almost, which would explain some of that haziness. Or if uh, if it's if it's just got like tea in it, like steeped in it. I don't know which, but it's got a it's got green tea in it. And uh, I got to be honest with you, I had my doubts the first time I had it. And I did enjoy it. And I do enjoy it. But if I'm honest, again, because we got to be honest with each other, friends, I don't actually reach for it all that often. Typically, when I get some Godspeed, you know me, I like my crispy boys. I like my my Otsukarasema. I can never say that one. And uh, obviously, the, the Czech Pilsner. <sighs> Bonkers. Have you tried the baby Svetli yet? It's 1.5%. And it's real good. Um, real nice beer. No, I don't know. I felt like maybe I talked about that last app. It's been a long two weeks, guys. Long two weeks. Um, anyway, let's drink this beer because we might as well get back into it. Here we go. Uh, what do we got? Well, Ochame, green tea IPA. It's amazing. The nose is very hoppy and very floral. Mmm. Like almost a little evergreeny, earthy, but very floral. Hmm. Some citrus in there for sure, but it's delicate. Let's let's stick it in the drink hole. And yeah, Ben, I haven't used the term drink hole in a while. I did that for you. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's that tea. The tea gives it such a tannic quality. It's very well, tea-like, quite dry. Um, it's not quite squeaky, but it's very dry and bitter. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because it is. It's it's um, evergreeny, earthy. The floral quality is still there, but the the bitterness from both the tea and the hops, it's not quite that they hide it. It's just they're so much more prevalent. You almost have to go looking for that floral quality. And then the finish is, again, not squeaky. It's not resinous. It's, it's tea-like. Um, quite, quite. Uh, I was not, not acetic. It's not the word I'm looking for. Astringent. Um, sorry, I'm apparently a little bit zonked today. Um, yeah, really good. The green tea is there, but I think it's adding a lot to that floral characteristic. They're kind of playing with each other. Hmm. Yeah, a little orange peely, some evergreen and earth, sort of a perfumey floral quality with a bit of that green tea. And actually, it's one. It, this is an interesting one because the more you sip it, your the your your sensitivity to the bitterness gets. Um, the more you have it, it, it I'm not going to say it gets depleted, but you're you're basically kind of overloading that sense. So after the first few sips, a lot of those uh, more nuanced characteristics start coming in. And the tea, the tea flavor is really popping. Um, but uh, a lot of that, the astringency is actually kind of dropping now. It's got a very, uh, very delicate mouthfeel, very creamy. Um, I don't think it's, oh, and the, the cans never say much of anything, which I kind of like. Um, I don't think it's a beer that would have oats in it. It might. I don't think it's got wheat in it. It doesn't have any real wheat characteristic, but there's a nice silky weight to the beer. Don't know if that's the tea or not. Couldn't tell you. I've never, no, that's not true. I was going to say, I've never made a beer with tea. I have made a beer with tea. It had Earl Grey in it. And I think I told you guys, I never got to drink it. Mark Murphy drank it all, as far as I know. Mark Murphy. What a guy. Mm. And I had, oh, it was from, um, Help me out. Stormstead, the Irish red, the name of which I'm forgetting, which had Earl Grey in it as well. That was really nice. But again, that one didn't have as prevalent an astringency from the tea, but you do pick up some perceived bitterness from tea because of course tea, tea can have a very sweet characteristic to it, but by nature it is astringent. Um, and so especially with an IPA that works really well. And then as well, an IPA that's got some earthy kind of evergreeny hop, the tea really plays against that well. I like this beer a lot. I I should pick it up more often is what it comes down to. I just don't. I don't know why. Pardon me. 
It's a really good beer. I also, mm, I don't think Bim plays favorites, but I know Bim really likes this beer a lot. This is like one of the ones that he drinks a lot of when he's not drinking beer that other people have dropped off at the brewery for him. Um, really nice IPA available at the brewery. And I think it's one of the ones available at the LCBO now. I think Achame and um, what's the name of the Saison with Yuzu? Is it called Yuzu? I think those two are available and maybe the Pilsner, but I'm 99% I'm sure. Uh, limited LCBO supply, but th that one's available at the LCBO. Mm. Heck of a nice beer. Really nice beer. Of course, the question, what should I eat while I'm drinking it? Well, I'm not going to eat anything right now because I'm sitting at my desk uh, with no food to hand. It's an interesting question. I have had this before, um, not with sushi, but with, um, a, well, it was, it was a, a, a takeout from, uh, um, from Godspeed, and it was the, uh, the pickle plate. Really nice really nice. There's uh, I think there's pickled daikon and mustard greens and something else really nice. Oh, Hey, George just jumped in. Welcome, George. Always a pleasure to have you big guy. Um, so that sort of thing works well because the green tea goes well. And especially with the pickle plate, pickles have, um, quite a bit of, uh, acidity to them, which is something that this beer doesn't particularly have. It's quite astringent and dry and bitter, and there's a nice earthy quality to it, and that nice silky weight with a good effervescence. Sourness is not something that you get in there. So adding in something sour, that's going to help. And then as well, like I said, I, like, I, I know mustard greens were on that plate and daikon and a different pickle. I can't remember what the other one was. But daikon is um, like white radish. Um, you remember in Super Mario Brothers 2, the big white radish that they would pull out of the ground and throw? That's a daikon. Um, it's sort of, that one's a little bit more um, turnip shaped. Often the daikon you'll see at shops here are quite elongated. They look like really big white carrots. Um, but daikon is, it's not as hot as um, like a, I don't know, a red radish, the kind of radish that we grew up eating. If your granny would make a little radish rosette and put in the salad um, or whoever, for me, it was my granny. Um, so it doesn't have quite the same uh, picante quality, uh, but there is still a radishy taste. And as well, it, uh, it's it got a very earthy uh, quality to it and, and as well with the mustard greens. Um, so those will play really well as well. That is actually gonna be it. That's my food recommendation, uh, especially because once again, <laughs> going back into lockdown except i never got out of it because it's i live in toronto and all we got was like four days of having patios open thanks a lot doug ford you can suck an egg um we're still in lockdown so if you want to support a good local brewery support godspeed buy some beers you can order it and also get some takeout and get the the pickle plate it's really good um i was just gonna see i'm gonna because we got time I got nothing but time. It's not God's good things. Um, and then these curry pans that um, Yamanaka-san is making, which are like, I can't even fully describe it. It's a sort of like a bun. It's like a calzone, but it's baked, I think. It might be fried now that I say that. But it's like picture a calzone, like a circle that's been folded over. So now it's a half circle. It's quite round, quite puffy. Um, it's cinched shut. And in the middle is, uh, is a, a sweet curry uh, that I believe there's... The, I think the meat-based one is beef, but it might be pork. And then they do a veggie one, which I think was like lentils or some sort of a bean. But it's like a sweet and savory curry in this pillowy, delicate, soft, I guess we would say pastry or bread, which is completely crispified on the outside. So it must be deep fried now that I think about it. Maybe it gets baked and then deep fried. I have no idea how uh, Ryusuke is making that but they are real good. And you can just hold them and eat them like a sandwich. Like I would have, if I wasn't taking one to a friend that we were going to have a porch beer together, I would have just eaten mine in the car on the way home and had thumbs on my lap and been happy as a climb at high tide. They are real good. Um, so you can pick that up. Um, karage on a, it's on a stick too. That's the other thing with the karage. No bones. It's just a piece of chicken skewered on a stick and deep fried magic. I'm told. Haven't had it, but I have faith. And, uh, and as well, the curry pans real nice. And I think the curry pans were like 
four bucks or five bucks a pop. Like, and, and I ate it and I nearly spoiled my supper and I ate it at like 3 PM. So I also am kind of habitual with how I eat. So there might've been something about that, but it was a good feed. Um, so I would do that if I were you, that's what you guys need to do. Go in and support Godspeed. They're doing great things. Pick up some brews, get some Ochame and, uh, and a curry pan. That's what I'm going to say. If you want the Karage, go for it. If you want to order takeout online, definitely go for it. That'll be a huge help. But if not, just walk in, pick up some beers, grab yourself a curry pan, walk down the street, eat your curry pan, have a sip of beer. You'll be happy. Trust me going to do you good it's going to be good for your soul and good for your belly and it'll be good for godspeed so do that please i'm gonna have a sip of beer then i'm gonna come back and tell you about what's happening and it'll there's nothing happening but that's what i'm gonna talk about <sighs> lockdowns maybe for season six i should have started doing advertising no one's paying me to so maybe if i just start giving away advertising somebody will pay me money for it That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Who should I advertise today? I'm going to advertise my months. That's a long while for me. Uh, my friends up at Muddy York Brewing. This episode of Toronto Beer Podcast, it, I was going to say is brought to you by, that isn't really quite what it is. This episode of Toronto Beer Podcast would like to support the Muddy York. That's what it is. I'm going to do reverse advertising. Instead of getting paid, I'm going to advertise because I like people. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, if I had a, a clapper or whatever they call those things in the movie set, I'd say take two. This episode of Toronto Beer Podcast is brought to you. No. Gosh, damn. Take three. I can't even remember what it was I was supposed to say. This is the stupidest bit ever. Oh, and look, and actually no one's watching now. Great. Well, people are listening at home. If you're listening at home, thanks for joining in. All my live audience is gone. Eh, maybe this reverse advertising idea. Not so good. Hmm. We'll have to see how that goes. Take four. Bitter. You know what? Hang on a second. I'm going to look this stuff up. Uh, what have we got here? Top Gaslight Hellas Lager. Yeah, should be right near the top. Muddy York Porter in at number two. Damn, I agree with those. Switchboard Session IPA, Storm Glass IPA is the one I was thinking of down here. I uh, don't know if that's currently available, but damn, that's a good IPA. Ooh, yeah. Oh, and Major Small Best Bitter. Love that bitter. Bitter, a tough style to find done really well. Granite kills their bitter. Kills it. Muddy York kills their bitter too. It's amazing. Um, Oh yeah, and working hard, their New England IPA. And then they did working twice as hard with Ren from Beer Diversity. Uh, and it was a double. Those are really good uh, New England IPAs. So, uh, ad done. Check them out online. They are at muddyyorkbrewing.com. They have curbside pickup. Uh, they have online ordering for direct delivery. Not sure what their delivery uh, range is, but I'm just looking here to see what it says. A Durham pickup uh, available too. So check that out. Really good people. Check out their socials. Beautiful photography uh, on, on their socials. And uh, and yeah, just a generally great brewery full of awesome people who uh, are among the group of people I'm missing a lot uh, in COVID because I would have used to have dropped in on them periodically, but it uh, just hasn't happened. So hope to see you guys soon. Jeff, Sue, the whole crew. Uh, they're, they're great. So look them up at break over. I'm going to have another sip of beer. Mm, we've been going for 24 minutes. Good golly. I got to get going. Got things to do. Anyway, uh, what's going on? Nothing. Nothing's going on. Uh, nothing ever will again. We've ruined it. We've destroyed our society. Uh, we just, this is why we can't have nice things, guys. This is why we can't have nice things. Oh, look, my beloved wife just joined in. Hi, babe. At least now somebody's watching live. <laughs> Good times. Um, yeah, back into uh, 28 days of lockdown. School's still open, though. So do we care about people getting sick? Apparently not. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't even tell you. Uh, I'm on a, an extended long weekend because there was a positive case in my son's class. This is where things get a little stupid. Positive case in my son's class. He's fine. No symptoms. Seems fine. Totally cool. Had a COVID test today. We're waiting on results. 
So he has to self-isolate because he possibly had person-to-person -person contact with a positive case. Possibly. That seems fair. Our daughter also isn't allowed to go to school. I should mention, our daughter is not in our son's class. In fact, she's not even in our son's school. She's in a completely different school. But she's not allowed to go to school either because she's the sibling of a person who had possible contact with a positive COVID case. So far, so good? Yeah, not too bad. Oh, hey, Lee. Haven't seen you around in a while, buddy. Um, so far, so good. I can live with that. I mean, it sucks, especially for them, but it makes sense. I can deal with that. Here's where things get a little kooky. Myself and my wife? No, we're fine. We don't have to self-isolate. We can go to the shop. I'm allowed to go to work, ostensibly, according to Toronto Public Health. Um, we're okay. As far as I can tell, and far be it for me to suggest I'm an expert here, I'm not a doctor. We have had more or less the same amount of contact with our son as our daughter, who does have to self-isolate, but we do not. You got me. And then here's where it gets really funny. My work said, no, we don't want you. You can just stay home until your son's test comes back negative. When your son's test comes back negative, then you're welcome to come back to work. So I don't have to self-isolate and I'm allowed to work, except I'm not allowed to work. Now, to be honest with you, I appreciate that partially because it's an extended long weekend and also partially because at least Canada Post is trying to keep people safe. Like they're kind of using their brains and saying, if the daughter's not allowed to be out, maybe he shouldn't be allowed to be out either. But according to Toronto Public Health, I am. So that didn't stop me from going to Starbucks to get a Frappuccino for my son after they swabbed the back of his brain by the look of it. Have you ever seen that swab go in? When we had our tests in the fall, I wasn't paying that much attention. I am not joking when I say I think seven to eight centimeters of the swab went into my son's nose. And I thought that might be touching the back of his skull right now. Now he has a really big head. And I know the physiology. Your nasal cavities go back to between your ears or something crazy like that. Anyway, like I said, guys, that's why we can't have nice things. So, uh, hey, we're in lockdown. I'm going to have a sip of beer. Province-wide, we're in lockdown. Here's what I want you to do. Actually obey the bloody rules. Could we do that? You know what? I assume everybody listening to this podcast or watching it live right now is a good, smart person who would just obey the rules. But if you're not, please do. Actually, I'm not going to ask. I'm going to say, do it. Don't be stupid. Don't be selfish. Okay? These rules are in place for a reason. Sometimes they don't make any sense. In my case, I'm very confused by the rules. But we're going to adhere to them. Because we got to. You got to trust the experts. If the experts are wrong, at least you can say, hey, I did what I was told. I held up my end of the deal. So please do. Stay home as much as possible. Don't come down to the beach like thousands of people did this weekend uh, to hang out. That's not okay. And it wasn't even that warm. I can't imagine what the beach is going to look like in two weeks. We're doomed. Stay home. You want to go out for some exercise? Do it. It's really important. Outside is a very safe place to be, as long as you're not surrounded by 6,000 other people. Uh, so go outside, go for a walk, explore your neighborhood. Most neighborhoods are pretty cool. It, you just need to get out there and figure them out. So please do that. Don't come to my neighborhood. Don't go to other cool neighborhoods either. I'm a pretty big NIMBY right now. But I'm more of like a not in my front yard, not on my street, not on my beach. Just stay home. It's not rocket science. Don't go to the cottage. Don't come to the beach. Go out, walk around, maybe watch some TV, check out some cool things on the Netflix. But please just obey the rules, okay? And while you're home, order a lot of beer from breweries and possibly food if they offer it too. And if they don't, pick a restaurant nearby an order from them. I saw a great thing, which was, have you ever thought about using Uber Eats and, and skip the dishes and those guys just as like a menu? And then you can order from the restaurant directly and have them order or pick up. Um, I should confess, I was thinking about doing something along those lines. Oh, hey, Brube. Um, we ended up using the app because the restaurant in question didn't do delivery. So it was a tough one. But uh I will give a shout out to Completo on Cody Avenue, just off Queen Street in uh, Leslieville, near Pape, if I recall. Really, really good tacos. You should dig them if you can. Whew, they were tasty. Um, 
that's what we got. Nothing's happening except you being a good, not selfish person and adhering to COVID rules so that maybe by this summer we're allowed out. I think I said this exact same thing like one calendar year ago and we didn't do it, guys. I hope you all did and it was everybody else's fault. But if you were part of the problem then, you're probably part of the problem now. So stop. Stay home. Don't breathe on people you don't need to breathe on. We know this aerosolizes. Just relax. Thanks, guys. That's this message. So what did we learn today? Ochame from Godspeed. Fantastic IPA with green uh, tea in it. Love it. Order it from Godspeed online. Get some food while you're there. Really good. This show brought you to... No, what did I say? Whatever I said. I'm not retaking that. Uh, Muddy York, check them out. Um, the, the, the inverted sponsor of the, uh, of the show today, uh, love them, love their beers, definitely order from them or stop by their tap, uh, not the tap room because you can't go in their retail store, uh, pick up some beers from them. Really, really awesome beer and, um, stay home. Uh, most of those people, both of those people that I talked about, most breweries are doing delivery. There's no reason for you to go out. You don't even have to put on pants. I mean, that should be the selling point right there. So stay home, be good, watch stupid things on YouTube and Netflix, drink lots of beer that you ordered to your door, and uh, be safe. I think next week I want a guest. If you want to get at me and say, hey, you should have this person as a guest, I can see what I can do. These days it's real easy because everyone's just doing Zoom calls, and I can do that. I'm real good at Zoom. So uh, hit me up, let me know. Who should I have on? That'd be nice. And until next week, a little after 9 p.m., you guys be good. Obey the rules, right? <laughs>